grandfather. And he was an immigrant, and they found work from Ukraine. Um, I'm told that there were posters in the different towns advertising that there were jobs in the United States. And one of those places was the coal mines. And I, I found that out when I visited the museum in Scranton. They had actually some of the posters that they put in Europe for people to come. We think he came in 1910. We're not sure. I, I can't find much about him, truthfully. But I do have pictures of him. I have, of course, met him. Um, and, but he worked in coal mines, and at one point, I guess, he had a small mine of his own. Well, these are stories that I get from my father, who has passed away also. Um, but, and that, that was, there was an accident, which I guess broke his pelvis. And um, to my knowledge, when my father passed away, we found out then he was still getting some kind of a, um, uh, from the coal people, he was getting whatever. Just some, a small, very small, yeah, compensation mm -hmm. for black lung. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. the, the words. Um, black lung, you know, struck all of them. And so anyway, doing all of this research into my own heritage brought me to seeing pictures of these children. And I thought, oh my gosh, they're just babies. You know, they're four, not four, but some are six years old. Mm -hmm. Working in the breaker houses, um, here's a picture of some of them. The different, they, they worked in something called the breaker house, which was a great big house where the coal came in in chutes. And then it came down in separate little channels. And the boys sat there all day and broke it up with the hammers and with their fingers and separated things like slate from the small pieces of coal. And if you notice, some of them have backs where they have to prop up their, their back so it doesn't hurt so much. But I read in some areas the uh, overseer did not allow them to do that. And if they work not fast enough to his liking, he was allowed to give them a smack with a whip to speed them up. Now look at them. They're, they're like eight, nine, ten years old. They got hurt. They got maimed. Um, they got injured. They breathed in the coal dust all day long. And um, they, in the end, they, they usually died of black lung. Now some of the other children worked inside the mines. This is, a, this is a cold wax and oil painting I did. I'm going, not following any kind of suit. Um, these are, this is called Ghosts of the Mines. This I think is near the mine where my grandfather actually worked. But the kids that worked in there took care of the donkeys and they managed the coal cars by greasing the wheels and opening and shutting doors. And there's the guy that really had the most dangerous job inside the mine other than the gas and what fell down if there was an accident um, was if the car slipped he, and you did get out of the way in time there went a limb or a hand or a leg or worse. So I did this with film in the abstract and made a negative out of it so they looked like ghosts and I glued those on there. I think with wax, and I just painted a few in there to show you how they had the lights on top of their helmets. They didn't have electric lights back then. And these are just friends after a shift, happy to get out of the coal mine. Um, I'll go back this way. I'm sorry if I'm not going to get around. But this was actually the first one I did. It's on metal. And I transfer the images onto metal. And then I have a friend who cuts out acrylic for me. And then I layer them so you get the idea of how many children actually worked in these mines. 
there were more than a sort than you might even think about. Um, this was one group that they, Lewis Hine took all these pictures. Lewis Hine was a photographer back then and he worked for the Labor Commission. And he would gather them all outside like a shift break and take their picture. So this this one was one big picture there, and this one too. Um, and then I just layered them, so you just get, kind of get the idea of how many children in any given day would work in these mines. And um, I mean, this poor little guy. They would come out just all covered with dust and dirt, coal dust, and um, next morning start all over. I think they worked six days a week, and I don't know, the, the pay that they got varied. I mean, sometimes it was a dollar a day, sometimes less. Not a lot. And they had to help their parents because their parents never had a lot of money. They all lived in housing that belonged to the coal mine owners. Um, they bought their food at the company store. Um, and I read in a lot of my research that if a father got maimed or in, you know, injured in any way and couldn't work, that the children had to quit school or go and take his place. Mm. Or they couldn't live in a company store and went over a company housing. Things, they called these villages patches, coal patches. And that's where they all lived. So. And this was actually the first one I did, and then of course I, I painted the background. And then this one was just a fun thing I did, just to kind of break the tension of looking at those sad faces all day. This is the canary in the coal mine that escaped and then wore a little miniature <laughs> mask so that uh, he didn't die, he got out. But they really did put canaries in the coal mines, and if the canary died, there was gas. That means they couldn't cut there anymore. They couldn't use their drills and stuff. Because if there was gas, then there was an explosion because mm -hmm. of the flame on top of their head. Mm -hmm. If the canaries dies, you get out of there. And, and that, yeah, that leads me to something else too when we get over there. Remind me to tell you about the rats. <laughs> well, rats are the rats. Are the rats? They have little sensors on their feet. And they can feel the vibrations. And so if you're in a coal mine and you see all the rats running in one direction, you follow them. Because that means they're gonna they're gonna look for an exit. This one's all made of all of paper. Um, this is a town in Pennsylvania near where my grandfather lived and worked, called Centralia. And some of you may have heard of it. There's a lot on the internet if you ever wanted to look it up. There was a, a fire started down below in one of the mines. And it wasn't a mine fire at all. It was kids building a fire in one of the old abandoned mines. And it caught on the sides and started burning in the coal vein that was left. And it's still burning 50 years later. The whole town's evacuated. Um, I took the original photo that I used for this because my father and my sisters used to go up to visit the graves uh, in back of the Catholic, the Greek Catholic Church, which is up on the hill, which is one of the few buildings that are left. And my grandmother and my grandfather are both, both buried back there. So we would go every year, you know, to visit the old aunts and make the pilgr pilgrimage to the church and whatever. And so one day we went and there was a big crack in the, in the pavement. So I snapped a picture of it and then that later painted it. This is all paper and paint. Just a collage. But I, I liked it. It was called The Fire Down Below. It's still burning. You can go visit it. You can go visit the cemetery. And uh, they're, they're mostly, um, they all died in the pandemic. That are up there. My grandmother died in uh, 1918. She's buried up there with her sister and my father's little brother, Mitro. And um, yeah, that was sad. You know, my father lost his mother and his little brother the same day. 
a lot of other people died too. Um, that was the way of the pandemic back then. So you know, we know th only too well because mm -hmm. now we experience it. It was worse than I think a lot more people died. So this is this is um, oh one more. Yeah. These guys, they were a lot of fun doing. This this guy had an attitude. I liked him. This guy has. Um, a leather thing around his shoulders. He took care of the donkeys, the burrows that were in the mines. Um, they, in the olden days before electricity, had um, carts that they pulled out. Once the, the cart was filled, they, the burrows would pull it out. And then they would go back in because I actually saw them. I went in the mines twice. Um, and they had pens, and they, the donkeys would live there. They never got to see daylight. <laughs> they just pulled a cart full of coal, and then they went back in. They were well cared for, because they needed them. They had to keep them healthy. But how healthy can you be if you only live in mind mine all the time? And never get to see daylight. So he tended, he was one of the ones that tended the animals. But you can see, I, I tried to get a lot, as many as I could. There is a little thing up there, like a canister, that holds the fuel. Hey, hey, it holds the fuel, and then they ignite it. And that's the only thing they have to see by, is that one flame. Might be a baby. Hey. All right, so we're going to move in here. And here's more pictures of Grandpa. I guess I, could, I should tell you his name. It's Nicholas. <laughs> this is Nicholas Choptar. That's my maiden name. And I call these generations. This is, this is a picture of a breaker house. This is painted. This is just acrylic. Just photo transfer. There's metal here. Um, ghosts in the backgrounds. But again, as I said before, if someone was injured, the, the children would have to take over if they wanted to remain living in, in the housing, the public housing there. But no, this, this child is just somebody that I chose. Actually, my grandfather, my father looked like that. <laughs> my father did look like him. But uh, he never spoke English, so I've never really had a conversation with him other than through my father. And I was 13 when he passed away, but he died of black lung. He did die of black lung and, of course, liver disease because they did drink a lot. There's no hiding that, really. And this I just brought from Atlantic City. This is a, this is, this is, I just took down a show in Atlantic City um, that was all about the glass children in New Jersey. In Farmington? I mean, I'm not Farmington. Um, Millville. Millville. I had a show in Millville last year, and then I sent a proposal to the Noise Museum, and they, they picked it up. So I just took it down two weeks ago. But I had this, this kid actually lives in Indiana. He worked in a glass factory in Indiana. So I'm going to try at some point to, in the future, maybe to put that glass show up again because there's a lot of pieces in it. It's about 40. Is that a Lewis Hines photo this or somebody is, They're else? all Lewis Hines, every one of them, unless maybe they're mine <laughs> that I took down in the coal mines, which I used some. But the photos of all these children were Lewis Hines. He took them all. He went all over the United States and took these kids. So, yeah, I don't know this kid's names, but I know a lot of the other ones. He documented, bless his heart, he documented everything. Marianne brought a wonderful book to share. Oh, yeah, yeah, I brought a book. Anybody can look at so that. So, you're welcome. Thanks, everyone. To yeah. flip through. It's this photography. Yeah. My uh, youngest son sent me that one year for Mother's Day. That was the, one of the best gifts yeah. I ever got. But yep. they were all in there. They're, every one of them. You always think about him just 
I always thought he was just took pictures in New York City of the mm -hmm. child laborers, mm -hmm. but he went all over the country. All now. over. I have photos. Well, yeah, some of the Spinner girls now, as we enter there. Um, he took pictures, and I don't have enough years in my life left, but they picked cranberries. Kids from Philadelphia came. They worked all over New Jersey, that he was here in New Jersey. He was in several factories in South Jersey. Took a lot of pictures in Melville, which I have. A lot of them I couldn't work with very well because they weren't good, and the reason being is he would go in there at midnight when the inspectors were not there, and he would take pictures of the kids working on the, in the lear, if you know what a lear, and the furnace. Okay. They mostly held on one, I think it's in the other room, they would hold the mold while a senior glass blower would blow into to make the pitcher or glassware, whatever it was. It was before they had things that automated. They did everything by hand. And these kids, I don't think, suffered as many injuries as the coal mine children did, or even the spinner kids, mm -hmm. because they climbed on machinery, as we know. Mm -hmm. um, but they did get burned, and they didn't go to school. Mm -hmm. And they were poor, like everybody well, else. Paid. Well, Ev paid. Evelyn knows. Mm -hmm. was paid. And very little pay, but they would I just wrote recently too, they, they, they tried to go to school and they would fall asleep because they were working all night, but the parents needed the money. Anyway, so here's some of those that I experimented with. I had a good time with these. These were kind of fun. There's the, I think I took the picture in that background, <laughs> I'm not sure. We took a lot of pictures, my, my partner and Mort and I, we, we took the camera and had it set just right. And we got a lot of great pictures of the inside of those mines. They were like, scary. I wouldn't want to do that every day. There's no way you could put me in an elevator and put me down a mile down into the ground. I was scared enough just going in on the car and just getting out and looking around thinking, I'm a mile in here. You know, it's really scary. Anyway, these little guys. There's one little guy here, Shorby. And there's a whole thing that Lewis Hahn wrote about him. His name was Schwerfie Higginbotham. And his job was to grease the wheels of the coal cars as they came out. And you can see he has like a raincoat of some sort of a rain slick on and two buckets of grease in his hand. But his job, even though he doesn't look like it's too awful, his job was really dangerous because if you slipped on that grease, and that car came at you, it was all over. There, there was no more shorty. He had to be, grease the wheels and get out of there really quickly, I'm assuming. And these are just, yeah, here's another picture of him. Shorty can be Motham. And then this, these are the kids that you know took care of the, the horses or the burros or the donkeys. Yeah, I tried to find as many as I could and get the little flame on top of the head. But uh, it was hard. I mean, look, he can't be more than 10 years old. And they would lie. They would lie about their age because they needed to work. The families needed the money. And here's the rats. There they are. Fear not the rats, I called it. Um, you know, every now and then you have to have some humor somewhere, so I, I put a respirator on. That. <laughs> we know they didn't give them respirators, not the rats or the or the canaries or the or the boys. No, not the kids either. There's one I would have liked to have had here that is uh, actually in, in um, the permanent collection in the Ellerslie Museum in Trenton. It had three boys, and it was called Three Boys, Three Stories, and I had a film of their lungs. And the last boy had clear lungs because he had a respirator on, but we know that's not true. They didn't give him respirators. So the other two boys at a young age already had signs of black lung. But that, that, uh, that one isn't here anymore. So, but anyway, there's the rats. They're climbing all over.
but that the stories I got uh, from the museum in Scranton, there's a great museum, the Anthracite Museum in Scranton. I love that place. I, they did take the exhibit, by the way. <laughs> They're <laughs> lost. But anyway, um, they have children's books that talk about the rats in the mines. And I thought, oh, well, I can do that too. I had that box, I don't know what it was, a paint box of some kind. And I just used it to put the rats in. I thought it would be fun. It wasn't really fun down there, but anyhow. So that's, and then there's another one there of breaker houses. There's very few left today. I, um, I go looking for them every time I go to Pennsylvania. Um, I don't have any more family in Pennsylvania, just some cousins. But um, a lot of them were preserved for a while, but they were so fragile even when they were built. Look at them. Just pieces of wood holding half of them up. And the noise, I guess, was the other thing. Their eardrums were totally destroyed. Because of the, imagine coal coming into shoots. But the sound was incredible. And later, when they had the machinery that did it, forget about it, you, you were deaf. So, and then there was this little painting there that I had done on the back of a clock. It's a piece of metal, and then the boys were just in front of there. But again, they, you know, Lewis Hine, if you take a look if you have time, he took big groups of kids, I mean, there's a lot in a shift. There were many. And the same with the glass factories. He would line them all up and I'm looking thinking, gosh, there's 20 kids already in this one factory at night. And oh, one more story I can tell you. Uh, a woman wrote in my book at the uh, museum in uh, Millville that her uncle, when the inspectors came by, they made him jump in an empty barrel and put a lid on top of them so that they wouldn't see that they were still hiring the children. Mm. And, and that was that was a reality of uh, her uncle was telling me. He was just young. And of course, Lewis Hine had a big box camera. And some of the factory owners would chase him out of town. They did not want him. They didn't want him in there taking pictures. Oh, okay. I, I yeah. We words. talked about that. They chased him out. He was a very brave man. Yeah, he was. And I, I read too that he would uh, go in there on under the pretense of selling Bibles. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. He got it, but he got in there. Thank you, Lewis. I mean, mm -hmm. I I really appreciate everything. Uh, when I had the first show in Pottsville, they did a little radio. Uh, Ex uh, talk and uh, interview, and he asked me if I had any heroes. I said, well, absolutely, it would be Lewis Hine, because if it weren't for him, I wouldn't have all this. I wouldn't. And I was so grateful that he documented everything. He had names of these children. Um, and teenagers, but, you know, the saddest ones were the ones that shucked oysters and picked cranberries because their hands were small. Mm. Four-year-olds mm -hmm. shucking oysters because their hands were small. Um, and to um, Evelyn, I think we, I don't know if we talked about this as we go in here. Um, I read one story of the children. I said there were four siblings. And yeah, we'll come in there. There were four siblings in one Before factory. You the, how you made those. Oh, these? I like the those. Oh, gosh. Because of the material to use. I thought that was really oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dollar store. Family <laughs> dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Family dollar. And then, yeah, Philip wanted to know the, the reporter. Uh, 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 is it metal? It's, it's metal, yeah. Oh. yeah. It's it metal. Like, like a garage or like, you know, one storefront. Yeah, say so look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't know they sold those. <laughs> I did, I did four the of them, but I can do, I ruined a couple of them because it was hard getting all the, but you use, you use a, uh, acrylic medium, and then you have to print, the, the hours and hours and hours of Photoshop oh, work first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hours, because 
that's the main thing. If the, if the photo isn't sharp, it's not going to look good at all. Right. So I would spend hours doing the photo and then getting it as sharp and as graphic as I can, and then you'd have to print it out mirror image first because you have to turn it around. Mm -hmm. And then you have to slop both sides, and then you have to get it in the grooves, mm -hmm. wow. and then you have to start praying a little bit. And then, <laughs> and then you, you wait a, a good 24 or more hours, and then you stick it in, in a bathtub or a thing and soak the paper off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And see, this one, I mean, this one is okay, but see the paper. But that's okay. It's just a It is a thing. I used her a lot. I used her, I think, three times. Mm. I used her, the little spinner girl. And um, this one I just hand painted with acrylic. Beautiful portrait. Yeah, she is Thank very beautiful. You. I'm actually doing portraits right now, but I'm doing them in a whale. Um, this one I did, that's acrylic, and then this little girl is a spinner. And then Evelyn loaned me a spool so I could get a picture of what a real spool looked like. Um, but that's what she did. There's, most of them had those jobs, they were spinner girls. And then, yeah, here's another one, Addie. Addie. Yeah, Addie Card, and then these two little girls. But she had such a face, you know. I guess I get attracted to their faces, and I feel so sorry for them. But this is just these pieces of acrylic, and this is metal, and then just the photo transfer. I think I put a piece of acrylic on top of that. Looks like I did. No, it's film. Yeah. It's film, and then I put metal on top of that. Yeah, I had a good time with film. <laughs> good old inches. <laughs> <laughs> I have run more stuff through that thing. I, this, yeah, all this stuff. And good friends give me neat paper. And, oh, this was a piece of papyrus. I ran that through the inkjet. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And this, this is actually something my son sent me from something else. But I really, it's, these are fun things. These are fun things to do. Um, and then at the last minute, I decided to put a face in it. And then we'll go here because this is, oh, look, you put more spools in there. Great. <laughs> All right. This. Fabric came from my dear friend Bambi. Uh, it was actually made here in Patterson somewhere in one of the factories. It's vintage. That's so pretty. And I love it. So I only ran I ran out of time actually. I, so I took some pieces and I took and used a spray glue and glued it to the back of the board. And then I printed a film put it on top of it. And I really like the result. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. I, I plan to do more when I, once I get the fabric back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> once I, but for now, I mean, it, it, it was a great exhibit. I just, I love that fabric. I is wanted to do a bigger one. one. Huh? Is that one too? In that, the back? Yeah, does that one have the fabric? No. Right? No, right? No. Okay. That was the she did. Just, I she only got okay. time to make the two because it was real. It was a real experiment. I didn't yeah. know how it was going to work. Yeah. So I used a, a spray oh, adhesive. Cool. With a fixative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A spray adhesive. And, you know, I put, put a big tarp and lots of newspaper down and put mask on. The gas mask. I probably should over the years, who knows what I've inhaled. But I love the effect of the film. Yeah. Because you see through it. And I use it I use it a lot in a lot of places. Like like the one I think there's one out on the on the stairs as we go down. Um, a little girl. Oh yeah, this little girl, she's filmed. Whoa. 
she's film. Now she's the one. She is, yeah, her. Just little. It's okay. Yeah. She. She has three siblings, and they all work in the same factory. She's the youngest. She has three sisters, and they all work in the same factory. And that's where I read that a lot of times you see so many girls in the factories, uh, cotton and, and silk, because the fathers I send all the kids out to work, and then they stay home. I was so uh, surprised at that one. Yeah, I know. Lewis Hine had it written. <clears throat> and then this little girl, I think I told the story already, she, she is actually a hunchback, and she um, likes going to the movies on weekends, and so she wants to earn money so she can go to the shows, she said. She's sweet. I loved her face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the significance of this? This is... This there and it's also there, right? What, just what the, the Chinese stuff? Just yeah. design. Okay. It's total design. Okay. I thought it went a collage. with the rest of the collage. Mm -hmm. um, this is paper. I think this is on a canvas. Most of them I put on a board because they have a stronger substrate. This is just stuff I get. Here's one of those little metal things. These are these are just pieces of circular acrylic. Uh, and then I took a, a, cra a oil stick and sort of gave it some cohesion by, you know, just drawing on it. But I liked how it turned out. It was fun. It was fun, but, you know, it, she's the highlight, really. Her name is, yeah, you know, what is her name? Mary? Mary Horner? I don't have my glasses on. Yeah, Mary. Mary with an E. That's what, how it was. Mary. But, yeah, the rest of the girls, yeah, there's so many. Um, when, you, when you look up on the Library of Congress, and that's where they all are, there's hundreds of these little girls. I, I couldn't keep up with them all. There were so many. And that was that same little girl again. She looks sad. But this was just an experiment with paper. I love paper. Just get get excited by paper. You know, I found such gorgeous stuff in, in the art stores. So that's it. I mean, you can ask me any questions. Oh, and then yeah, this was the last one. With, with those, those girls. I found that kind of at the last minute. It was the very last one I did and it ended up Phil used that on the newspaper article. Um, all of those girls that are in the circle were all together in one photo. And this girl, I liked her because I could get a good image of her face. So many, you can't. Um, and then that one girl, I've used her several times. This one, she looks older, but I guess you age quickly if you have jobs like that. So, so I guess that's it for up here. I thank, thank you. you. Thank you.